the chief executive of Heathrow Airport, has called on the government to introduce mass health screening checks at airports following criticism of Britain's loose border controls during the worst global pandemic for a century. Even the guy who's running the airport thinks that maybe this has all been a bit too liberal. John Holland Kay sent a letter to Matt Hancock, the health secretary, on Thursday evening, urging ministers to take a lead in developing global screening standards at airports. These could include measures such as temperature checks, antibody tests, and a requirement to carry a health certificate. But Downing Street on Friday rejected the call for checks at airports, saying the government's position was based on medical and scientific advice. Uh, to this point, it has been considered that wouldn't be an effective step to take, Number 10 said. Uh, we keep everything under review and we do continue to look at what is happening elsewhere in the world. So, I mean, there, there is a very odd situation here where there are 15,000 people arriving every day um, at British airports and they're not subject to any tests for coronavirus. Um, I mean, the, the, the thing that's getting lots of um, publicity because it's kind of visual and people find that when they go to other countries in in this period of time they get their temperature checked that to me seems like a bit of a red herring I think when the government say checking people's temperatures will have a very marginal impact because you know most people who are COVID who are positive for coronavirus don't currently have a fever it's only one of many symptoms and there are many people who are pre-symptomatic or, or asymptomatic so I don't think the idea that you can sort of protect your your society from incoming cases of coronavirus is, is 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 helped or is made possible by by those temperature checks. But for me, the most surprising thing is just that why haven't we controlled who's going in and out? Mm. Um, because almost everyone else has, right? I mean, this mm. is Britain here is in a real minority. Well, I don't think there's anybody, anybody else. Let's go through the numbers here. Canada shut its borders on March 16th. Denmark shut its borders on March 13th. France uh, has stopped letting people in from non-Schengen areas, uh, non-Schengen states since March 11th. Germany um, doesn't allow people in who aren't from uh, Schengen member states. Uh, a few exceptions, Switzerland, Britain, and so on. India has banned all international flights except cargo until April 14th. Japan um, has a, a ban on 73 countries, including the US and UK, until April 3rd. New Zealand's had a ban since March 19th, except for non-permanent residents and, and uh, except for permanent residents and citizens. And the United States has banned the entry of all foreign nationals who've traveled to China, Iran, Austria, Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, many, many, many other countries uh, up to 14 days for arrival. So. Britain is Britain is unique, and I agree with you that the the temperature testing thing it's kind of like it's just purely performative. But hey, it wouldn't be hard to do, you know. Mm. The whole thing of oh, this test it creates friction and so on. Well, okay, what's the problem with sticking a thermometer in somebody? And the, by the way, I wouldn't suggest that. What we should be doing is what's happening in Malta, where you basically go into quarantine for two weeks. You arrive, you have to you give a, uh, an address, you have to stay there. The police are checking on people once twice a day if you're not there you get a, i think it's a three thousand euro fine that's an incredibly easy thing to enforce mm. okay and so britain okay and there's only fifteen thousand flights uh, coming in a, a day right so actually fifteen thousand people. people yeah sorry my apologies fifteen thousand yeah. people uh are there. so it's very easy to enforce right um and you could be, maybe even have it a bit higher five ten thousand pounds and i just don't understand why wouldn't we do that i don't get it I just do not understand why wouldn't we do that? There's not there's not a huge extra cost. It, it might even raise revenue. So mm. I, I just think, and, and the response you saw from Matt Hancock is, and I tweeted about it sort of just mockingly, they said, well, we already have the, the pandemic and we already had this crisis and it just doesn't really seem, in the context of how it's already unfolding, it won't really change very much. Well, this is what we keep on hearing, isn't it? It's what we heard towards the end of January, then throughout February, then in March, we won't have a lockdown, it won't really change much. You know, what if we get on top of this? What if in a month's time we're down to uh, 100 deaths a day? Um, we've got, you know, that, that low R number and people, somebody flies in from, from New York or from Lombardy or, uh, or from uh, uh, part of China and they, you know, they get straight on the London Underground. I mean, that's, it's crazy. Surely it's such a simple thing to do. And I think it speaks against the kind of the neoliberal mindset, which is just states can't do things. You know, we can't get on top of things. We need a decisive plan and you need to act accordingly. Uh, and there is this just ideological commitment to frictionless, you know, international travel. What it, also, what it also speaks to, though, because you, you can rationalise it, which is that 
I mean, I've, I've said all week on this show, this, the government now has two options as to what it's going to do next, what its exit strategy is going to be. One of them is to keep the virus moving at a low level through the population so that we don't breach our ICU capacity, but that, you know, sort of 2% of the population have it at any one time. Um, that's, you know, that's been their default strategy throughout most of this period of time. It's what Sweden are doing. The other option is to say, let's completely suppress the virus with a with a quite strong lockdown. And then after that, we're going to have test and trace to try and isolate and suppress the disease wherever it arises. So we're trying to keep the disease down to as, as few cases as, as feasibly possible. If you were going to do the second one, you have to close your borders. If you're going to do the first one, there's not much point in closing your borders. So the fact that they haven't you know, introduced any restrictions on international travel is probably the best evidence there is that the government at the moment have no plans whatsoever to try and properly suppress mm. and contain coronavirus. They're going to go for basically the Sweden strategy of let it slowly move through the population. Yeah, I think this confirms that. And, you know, you saw it. Uh, I think we we still had people flying in from the, the province that surrounds Wuhan. There were still people were advised to travel there, but, to, you know, take precautions as the city was shutting down in China. And then they were coming back. The state wasn't monitoring. I wrote, you know, this was the the, uh, the video I made in Navarra Media. And then they were advised to stay at home for two weeks. But again, no enforcement. You could have done the exact same thing. If the Maltese state, Malta, 300,000 people, 400,000 people, has the capacity to say, you have to stay in this property, this address, for two weeks, or you'll be fined this amount of money. Why can't the British state do that? It is so authoritarian in so many areas. Why can't it do this this particular thing in the context of a pandemic? You know, it just it just speaks to the absence of crisis management uh, and state. You know, we we see this the Deloitte. Uh, I think it was Deloitte that were running one of these testing centers. That Deloitte testing to world of adventures. Yeah. They're accountants. Why? Why are Deloitte running? And it, it didn't work. Surprise, surprise. Just like when Capita run army recruitment or you know uh, an NHS helpline, it doesn't work. Privatization, outsourcing, it doesn't work. You need an effective state to do this. It's just keep on coming to the fore. And I think, I think the policy around um, incoming air passengers is another example of that.